welcome to Vadiram Raman sir. I say this with complete authority because we feel like we belong here now. <laughs> We've been here forever. <laughs> but thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting us. You know, we are sitting here today in the latter half of 2022. I don't know if you realize this, but it's been 14 years since Mr. Blessy and me first shook hands oh and my decided God. to do RDG. 2008 wow. is when this started. And after our first discussion of wanting to do this film and wanting to take it international, like today, even back then, mm -hmm. our first aspiration was A.R. Rahman. Oh my God. <laughs> so, and both of us are pessimistic. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't think this was going to happen. But I told Bless Satan, we have to make an effort. You know, yeah. We have to somehow get to Sir and speak to him. And I remember so clearly the day he called me and said, uh, you know, Rahman Sir is doing a film. I thought he was pulling a fast one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, here we are today and I've listened to what you have done for the film and I cannot wait for the world to listen to what you have done for Hadiji Githam. But I know this is going to sound like the most cliched interview question. <laughs> I have to know and I'm sure everybody wants to know, what made you say yes? I think the each movie, for each movie, we belong to certain movies yeah. and that can never be, a destiny can never split that. Yeah. Um, I was super busy. Yeah. I was doing many other things. I was doing my own movie production. I was yes. directing one stuff. In between, I mean, he came in and he was very slow talking. I'm like a thousand things moving in my mind. <laughs> Sir, in the movie is... A... <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> and it is so nice. And the more we went into it, I knew that this is a very serious man and he's dedicated his life to art. And working with people like Blessy, Mr. Blessy is a blessing for us because they remind us what commitment is again and again. Even though we are committed, even more when people, like you said, 14 years, it's a dream of a person to make a movie. Yeah. That means his conviction and his preparation to give us that much of his life for, for one single thing. And pulling a, an amazing crew, we're all believing in the, in the project and a beautiful story. Even today, just like back in 2008, he belongs to the creme de la creme of Malayalam industry. Yes. I mean, he's one of the few filmmakers who I'm can, lucky walk, to get who can walk to any star in Malayalam, uh, you know, and say he wants to do a film and we'll just say, yeah. Yeah. Even before Blessy tells us what the film is about, we'll say, yeah, of course mm -hmm. we're doing the film. And he's invested 14 years of what is essentially the peak of his career to make this film. So all of us here, including me, the cameraman, the production designer, we all are quite aware that we are just being part of his vision. Yeah. And I'm so glad that his vision has got the AR Rahman music to go with it. I hope I can do justice. I know you have. <laughs> I'm getting there. I, I, I want to talk to you about what the music has done to the film. I'm getting there. But one thing I want to know is, you know, this this film obviously is based on uh, one of the largest selling works of literature in Malayalam, which is again inspired from a real life incident. Yeah. Uh, there is one thing in the story that has always struck me as an actor, hmm. and that one element is faith. Hmm. You know, I I think Najib's journey in the desert is in itself strangely and uh, in a, in a lot of ways in an enlightened sort of a way is very spiritual. Yeah. So a lot of it is about faith. What is it about the story that struck you? That one thing, if you had to put your finger on it. I didn't even know which faith uh, the movie is about. Yeah. I didn't even know. I said yes. And I said, who's this guy? Yeah. So for me, it was like, Blessed Sir has come and I have to do this. I said, I've not done a movie. People are saying, why are I not a Malala movie? This is a great movie to start with because uh, not every movie is very music friendly. Yeah. Like certain movies, whatever you do, will take it, you know, like a mother yeah. and it will display the best of your work to the world and very rarely those things come to composers, yeah. you know, if you if you get a movie like that, you're lucky to have that stuff. Some, some things will slip away from you, right? Yeah. And so I think I, I felt like this movie has come to you for you to score and for you to push yourself and see what soul you can bring back. And as you talked about faith, faith is uh, a very complicated thing. It it's is very simple. Yeah. It, it keeps you going, but the the paradox of it is the more God loves you, the more He puts you to test. True. <laughs> and whether it's a prophet or whether it's in any religion, the tests are for faithful people. And that's to cleanse them, to, to take them to even more greater heights. Yeah. And when I watched some of the visuals, He put exactly 
like what he said in the film yeah. and you look like super epic in this thank you so much it's you know i this is one of the arguments i've had with bless yet on uh, mr blessy during the making of the film so we've had this argument on why would uh, he not have tried to commit suicide yeah why would he not have tried to take his own life because there is the saying there is a belief like in in islam it says it's haram ah like all your faith all your belief all your prayers all your good deeds will get cancelled if you try to suicide so i i kept telling him i don't think it's it's in his hands i don't think yeah. he has the right to do it you know uh, i think najib would be the kind of person who at, after a point realizes that you know this is a test yeah. meant for me to live through and i have to live through this and that's a journey of the film and uh, that's a journey of making the film actually yeah. should we all go through this yeah in different ways you know i go i went through this you might have gone through in a very different way yes you know it not that you have to put be put into a desert maybe you are now <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> you believe in something uh, but but we come out of it if you take it as a challenge it's a challenge if you take it as a punishment and you stop, want to brood about it you can keep you know yeah all crying and and all this stuff i feel like um i tell my people like when there's a challenge when there's some a problem that's a challenge for you to hope because the next stage is waiting for you and that's the challenge which you have to tick mark that yes. you you have achieved it you faced it you won it yeah and uh, that's a great lesson for us <laughs> i agree uh, another thing i want to talk to you about is we actors have processes about how we comprehend a script and how we understand a character and our process is largely based on what is written on paper and what the director tells us what is the process behind scoring a film especially a film like this how do you where do you start from do you do you start from uh, Uh, a background a bit of background music or do you just it's crazy sometimes my worst fear is like you go ne- next to the keyboard or sit and then nothing comes to you and everything sounds bad <laughs> or everything sounds like something you've done before so it's a refinement constantly you know like because i worked in the movie industry for 40 years now yes. 10 years of playing 30 years of composing there's a preset already telling me how to do this or just take a violin and then take a strings and then you can do a theme and then it'll sound good no but that's been heard before yeah like what what is the sound of this soul of the story which is going to make the theme of this the soundtrack of this one yes so like past two days i've been looking at the goats looking at the camel looking at the desert looking at the sand and thinking what is that sound <laughs> actually Have you found it no <laughs> <laughs> well i hope you do yeah uh, but whatever sounds we have listened to that you have given us i have to tell you uh, it's affected us in such a way i want to tell you a small incident your track periode periode en rahmane periode rahi periode en rahmane periode rahi so while shooting this uh, we played the rough track of periode on speaker so that everybody would get the mood the the camera trolley would know at what pace to move the actors would know what the mood of the scene is and i think pretty much everybody teared up i know i did because uh, blessy would come and tell me no you can't cry i said what what do you mean so he's too dehydrated to cry <laughs> and i'm like i'm trying not to <laughs> so that the, what the, what music yeah. does to a moment in a story what music does to a point in your performance it is just inexplicable and we have to thank you and no end for giving you know, us the, that track the words actually the words came in and the words were so beautiful the, the words were so yeah. beautiful that i recorded it and then said there's no it's beautiful but there's no you know anchor for this huh. and so i asked the singer what do you call god like so we can say perione we can say so i've heard some of the mapla songs yeah. you know as a child and then i said okay let's take some words out of it and so we made the chant on the fly so periyone ramane periyone rahim yeah, and these are the ar rahman ar rahim ar rahim that song is a trance it's yeah, yeah. and it's what it's called because beyond religion actually yeah. when when it when it says something which is called the merciful yeah and so compassionate and <clears throat> i like the many strangely many tracks yeah there is a arabic track which of course has, Allah <laughs> Allah 
I was scoring for the Messenger of God in Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was scoring for that movie, um, I was working with the trio of Gibran, you know, yeah. the three brothers, and I asked them, um, "Do you have any female singer? I feel like we can have a. I just want to record some hummings." And I said, well, "There's a female singer. I can. There's one singer I can call her." So this lady comes out, and she just starts singing, and we're all tranced. <laughs> Unbelievable, Sanam Musa. And uh, so I said, just sing whatever you. So she sang one of the folk songs, yeah. ancient stuff, and the song is from that recording. And I didn't know where to put it. I felt like we should release it as a single. And and then when he came in and he talked about the desert, I said, this is it, Bedouin. Yeah. And this is the track. And then he heard it. And then bless you, sir, heard it. And he said he really loved it. Yeah. So that track came about like a like a rare jewel. Yes, it did. <laughs> I mean, I. There is so much I want to speak about the music on the film, but I also feel that people should listen to yeah, it yeah, first. You know? not, not yeah. <laughs> people should listen it, to it because I, I, I'm anticipating that the effect it had on me when I first heard. If half of that is created on an average listener, you know they're in, in for some serious treat. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> ab about uh, the first song we shot, which was back in Kerala in, yeah, yeah. in, in 2018. Uh, it was very surprising for me because I mean this in the most uh, uh, complimentary fashion. Because the first time I heard that track, you didn't like it. No, I loved it. <laughs> it to me seemed like what an informed Johnson master oh. or Ravindran sir would maybe do if they were around today with the most modern instrumentation. Did you listen to Malayalam film music? Well, I grew up on Malayalam music. My father. But it was more than quarter my, of a century. My since father you... served. Uh, of course. I mean, uh, for to every. And he did his own music, and uh, he was the whole foundation of my first 15 years. Yeah. Was Malayalam. You were yeah. always in touch. I was. I was. I looked at every director would come to my dad's place, so every assistant director, every tabla player, every lyricist, and the smell of BD. <laughs> <laughs> These like after he passed away, but still it was you know next Arjun Master and Eddie oh, Umar, and so I was playing with Johnson. So it just lingered for another six years after my father died. Then I went to Tamil. And yes. Kannada and Telugu and all that stuff. So, when something's itched in your mind when, from childhood, it never goes away. That's it in voice. Yes. Course. So, it's like uh, consciousness. It's deep into the consciousness of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even that—that that was the first, uh, some of the first footage we ever shot for the film, and we were all so excited that you know we are listening to A.R. Rahman music in Malayalam <laughs> after 26 years, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like an epic moment for all of us. I remember we were in, in Kerala and we played the song on speaker and everybody went, oh. <laughs> uh, what about uh, Aad Jeevadam, uh, the film, you think makes it something beyond a Malayalam feature film? I've not seen the whole film yet. Yeah. But I've seen bits and pieces, it looks epic. It looks like. Today's Lawrence of Arabia kind of a visual. Wow, right? okay, that, that's. <laughs> you know, cameraman is amazing. Yeah. They've done, you know, they've just lived in it. They, they all know a fingertips what to do. And so when I went for my first shot, they told me do this. And I looked at the shot, I said, I know that I look awkward in many things, so I can do things which, which whatever's good in it, you pick up from it. I'll do some freewheeling. <laughs> so I said, I'm not an actor. I don't, I can't fit in everything you say, but I'll do my own thing. So they, I did what Blessy G said, and then I did my one thing. And I said, "Okay, do your free willing <laughs> and everything." And and one last question that I have to ask you personally is: I know that you are in the middle of a thousand things. You're probably the busiest person out there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I also know you have a deadline coming up. You have to del deliver a film as soon as you go yeah. back. I know that. I'm privy to that information. What made you want to come and, and visit the place? I didn't even know. I felt like. Um, I was looking at my schedule and it was looking impossible. <laughs> there's Mani Sir waiting for PS2, there's yeah. Gautam in waiting, there's Cobra waiting, there's there's so many in my own movie distribution. Yes. Waiting. And my daughter's waiting reception is happening. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to Dubai, I'm going for the IPL. Uh, I told my assistant, just put a flight, don't, don't tell anybody <laughs> that we're coming. We'll just go quietly and finish those two days and go back to the rest of the Is this trip going to help? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so glad. I mean, who would 
it's like a paid holiday <laughs> in a way. You know, we we have always believed we are making a very special movie, but we are going to flatter ourselves and tell ourselves that we are making something very very special because A R Rahman came all the way to the <laughs> Thank uh, you so much for taking time out. Thank you. Uh, good good luck to all the crew. Every single member, I could see their you know, commitment. Thank you, sir. And thanks to you. Thanks to Percy. Thanks to the producer. Thank you. We we hope we make a film that's worthy of your music. God bless. Let's let let God bless this film and let this films. meaning and soul reach every person inspired thank you thank you so much